helicopter operations in Nigeria is largely in support of the oil and gas industry. So I would say um, that we have between 80 and 100 helicopters operating in Nigeria, and they mainly work in around the Niger Delta area in support of uh, on onshore and offshore exploration activities and production activities. So the, the bulk of the work that we and uh, the other organization who provide the service to the oil and gas industry is uh, from uh, onshore activities, flying to swamp areas, uh, wellheads and all those uh, weather helipads and uh, production platforms in that area. Uh, to the southeast of Nigeria, there are a number of rigs offshore, but predominantly uh, most of the work is onshore. And of course, these days we have the deep water activities as well, uh, where you have production, uh, floating production facilities way offshore. So that's the, the bulk of the work. There's very little helicopter activity in the business area. Uh, and business area, I'm talking of corporate activities, uh, uh, flying activities like uh, you'd find in other parts of the world where people own personal aircraft. There are few, but they're very, very few. You have personally fly into this area in the Delta. Tell us what their training entails. They're mainly pet uh, petroleum technologies and engineers and uh, lots of geologists as well uh, and their management uh, also. But uh, they are prepared for helicopter training. They do the basic uh, offshore survival training. Uh, they also do underwater survival uh, training. So they're well trained. Uh, safety is a huge focus in the oil industry. Uh, so the people who go offshore are well prepared for flights offshore. And even before you take a helicopter flight in Nigeria, especially in the oil and gas sector, you have to have done the basic training and the recurrent training requirements. And also, even before you board the aircraft, there's a long briefing. It's not like in an airline. You have to sit down and watch a video. And you could be asked questions about what you've uh, seen to make sure that you will not uh, become a problem or a challenge for them in the event of an emergency. How much does the cost of training impact on your overall business and also on the development of human capacity? Uh, yes, sadly there isn't uh, a training facility for helicopters now in Nigeria. In the past, the Air Force had uh, a training school. They've uh, refurbished and created a new training school in Enugu. Um, and they're beginning to take uh, commercial uh, civilians on those uh, training programs. We haven't tried that yet. But the bulk of helicopter training is done outside Nigeria. In the past, it was done in the UK. Uh, and now um, we do our training in the United States. Some people have gone to South Africa. But it's, uh, it's an area that needs development in Nigeria. And we have talked to the College of Aviation Technology in Zaria, and we're also willing to assist. Being uh, arguably the largest operator in Nigeria, we're willing to assist uh, as a capacity building opportunity for us. The helicopter training cost is very high. So you might be able to get uh, an airplane training up to our commercial pilot's level, the CPL for $100,000. My experience so far is it cost us about $250,000 to train a helicopter pilot. So it's, it restricts the number of people that, uh, who can afford that sort of training. And that's why we sponsor that anyway. Uh, and we benefit from that because we, we sign agreements with them that allows them to stay with us for six years. Um, other than that, it's essentially the same sort of training. But helicopters just happen to be more expensive when it comes to training. Is there a difference between the helicopter training and the training for the commercial jets? The, the training regime on helicopters is entirely different to the training regime on uh, fixed wing. Uh, however, what we do generally is we have our ab initio students go through flying airplanes, uh, the training airplanes, uh, to up to the PPL or private pilot's level, and then we convert them to helicopters. So um, at that stage, uh, they're in a position to, we, we, we have a level of confidence that they can fly. The helicopter is far more complex and uh, difficult to manage. Tell us, how complex? You, you've got to fly the helicopter all the time. Um, you, you, you're managing three things at the same time. So if you've got two left feet, you can't fly. Uh, you're having to manage the, the cycle control, the collective control, and you're going to move the pedal as well. Um, that requires a level of uh, dexterity, and some people don't have it. So the fact that you can fly an airplane does not necessarily mean that you can fly a helicopter. You actually say that the federal government is not involved in helicopter operations, but they have lent support to the industry. 
What do you mean by this? The, the Nigerian government is not really involved in uh, helicopter operations because, uh, like I said at the beginning of the interview, uh, over 90, I'd say, in the region of 95% of helicopter, probably more than that, of helicopter operations is in the oil and gas industry. So the support that we get is from the oil and gas industry. Um, the government, I believe, provides support with the Air Force where they train the, because there's a requirement for that. So they have, that's where, I do not expect the government to help to, to get involved in helicopter operations in, in Nigeria. I think where the government can step in is the area that we have a challenge at the moment, which is training. So it's in support of the College of Aviation Training in Zaria. It's in support of the uh, International College of Aviation in Ilori. And possibly the, putting some money into creating a, uh, a helicopter training establishment. And that could be investment in Zaria, investment in Ilori. Until that is done, that foreign exchange, uh, and I've given you a rough figure for what we spent, 250000 How many families can really afford that for one person? So it means the training will go outside Nigeria and somebody's got to spend that money outside Nigeria rather than have that money spent in Nigeria. This is where I think the government can do it. And Zaria, a few years ago, talked about doing this, but it's all gone quiet. Uh, that's the area I think the government can help. All right, so tell us about those machines, the helicopters themselves. Uh, you, you need a full runway for an airplane to land. You just need a small airfield for a helicopter to land. And that's why we can go into different locations uh, where normally uh, people would not be able to get into with uh, normal transportation or their own cars. So the fact that the aircraft can move forward, backwards, sideways, up and down, it, it's a level of versatility and, uh, that it's not available to uh, aviators. Uh, and only those in the military and uh, helicopters can uh, really get that. The, the fleet that we operate as, or is generally seen in Nigeria is usually uh, an aircraft of this size, which carries 19 uh, with uh, two, two pilots. And this is as sophisticated as any of the airplanes that you see around. Uh, probably even more sophisticated in terms of complexity of the control systems uh, in the aircraft. The, the next lot of the medium, uh, we call the medium, uh, those are the ones that, that take about uh, between 12 and 15. And some, we now have the super medium, um, those that take between the 12 and 16. So different definitions. And then, of course, you have the smaller machines, which uh, you see around, which are the, the ones that carry four or five, uh, more the private uh, sports sort of aircraft. They're all over Nigeria, but they're, they're a very small number of them. And the ones that we tend to use in the oil industry are more the medium and the heavy. So this is that we would call this the heavy aircraft or the heavy helicopter. And the one that just departed a few minutes ago is the medium helicopter. It takes between 10 and 12. They cost so much. Tell us about costs. So an aircraft of this type will cost about $30 million. Uh, an aircraft of the type, of the, this is the heavy aircraft. Um, by the time you start adding all the things that are required by the oil companies, it becomes a lot more expensive. Uh, an aircraft of the, of the medium size, the, the type that just took off with 10 or 12 passengers, would be, you're looking at a region of 10 to, 12, uh, to 15 million. And then the smaller ones are a lot uh, cheaper. So you're looking north of uh, 4.5 million, 6 million, dependent on the, uh, the configuration of the aircraft. Tell us generally what helicopter operations in Nigeria is like. And on the whole, we're okay. We have seen the last year, year and a half uh, flat. But that, it, it's the story of what's happening in the oil industry. Uh, whenever they catch a cold, we feel the, the bigger cold. The business on a day-to-day -day basis is, we do not see this business changing until there's a change in the oil industry. And that, in, that change will probably come out uh, when a decision is made on the PIB, the Petroleum Industry Bill. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, that's when we think we'll be, there'll be opportunity for growth. At the moment, it's you take one, uh, your competitor takes the other, and we're just sharing out of the same pie. That, that pie is not growing bigger. That pie will grow bigger when things change in the oil industry, and unfortunately, the oil industry is not changing at the moment. A helicopter is a type of rotor craft in which lift and thrust are supplied by rotors. This allows the helicopter to take off and land vertically, to hover, and to fly forward, backward, and laterally. Because of its versatile use in the hard-to-reach places, these flying machines are costly. Here now are the top five most expensive private helicopters in the world. 
First is the Augusta Westland AW101, valued at a whopping $21 million. It's a medium-lift helicopter from the British and Italian chopper manufacturer. The variant for important persons is used in Saudi Arabia and India. The main design is primarily used for anti-submarine warfare and for transport and utility. At $17 million is the Sikorsky S-92, a twin-engine medium-lift helicopter. It is the basis of the H-92 Superhawk that is used by the military and a pair of General Electric CT-7AA turboshaft engine powers it. The helicopter has an aluminum frame as well as some composite components. The rotor has four blades and is designed to reduce noise and increase the lift. Following closely is this $15 million worth Bell 525. Nicknamed Relentless, this helicopter is currently being developed by Bell Helicopter. It'll be a medium lift helicopter made primarily from composites and metalland expected to be the first commercial helicopter to incorporate fly-by-wire flight controls with a 16 passenger capacity and speed of 261 kilometers per hour while it will go up as high as 20,000 feet. Next is the Augusta Westland AW139 at a price tag of $14.5 million. It's a medium-sized twin-engine helicopter providing the basis for the AW149 being used by the military and the AW189 being sold for civilian use. The main rotor has five blades while the tail rotor has four. Its landing gear is retractable and is powered by two Pratt & Whitney PT-6C turboshaft engines. It can carry up to 15 passengers in three rows underlining the spaciousness of the aircraft. The last of the five is Sikorsky S-76C, valued at $12.95 million. This medium-sized commercial utility helicopter is powered by a couple of Turbo Mecha aerial 1S1 turboshaft engines. It is used by the British royal family as well as by American entrepreneur Donald Trump. The chopper's main purposes are for airlines, corporations, hospitals and government operators. Both main and tail rotors have four blades and the landing gear is retractable. As the program trails to an end, the Chinese government is proposing a China-Africa Regional Aviation Plan aimed at fostering development in Africa while creating jobs for the continent's unemployed youths. The creation of an African Regional Aviation Network. Africa has seen its aviation market demands expanding rapidly. However, it lacks airports, air routes, especially regional operation capacity. So, there is an acute problem of inconnectivity for commercial interactions. While China has the experience and capacity in the construction and the management of airports, the feeder jets developed by China can meet African needs. That's our package on this edition. If you have any comments or suggestions, do reach us on our feedback platforms. Till we see you next time, I'm Bukola Joe Okitsumbi. Okay,